Hi, I'm Dina Brown, and this is Carpool Chats, where I love to talk all things money and your divorce for women while I'm sitting in the carpool line. Today, I want to talk about how to fund your divorce. If you are high net worth, if you own businesses, real estate, and when I say high net worth, I'm thinking around like $4 million and up. It is going to cost you thousands of dollars, most likely, to hire the professionals you need to get through your divorce. And so there are a few ways that you can fund that. And so I wrote down eight different ways that you can fund the high price of divorce. And the first one we're gonna start with is cash flow, which is pretty obvious if you have compensation, paycheck, salary, bonuses, you can use that obviously to find your divorce. But you can also get a little creative. The second way is from savings accounts. That's not, not what I was thinking as creative, but it is, you, could, you could use your savings accounts and hopefully you have at least six months worth of living expenses in your savings account. That's kind of a rule of thumb. Uh, third, Here's where we get a little creative. Uh, you can use your home equity line of credit. So if you've got a lot of equity in your home, you could use uh, the line of credit, but keep in mind interest rates have gone up lately. So um, you might pay a higher interest on that if, if that's something that um, you've got to do. And sometimes you can even deduct the interest from your tax return, but I, these things are complicated and that's why um, you should talk to a financial professional about it. So, okay, that was number three. So number four is selling positions, stocks, bonds in your investment account. So remember with that, if it's in an investment account, that if you sell it at a gain, you may be subject to either short-term capital gain, gain or long-term capital gain, and uh, those are taxed differently. So. These are things we have to think about. We have to think about interest. We have to think about taxes. It's not so black and white. Okay, so that was number four. Number five is if you do have an investment account, you can take a loan on that account called a margin loan. Your account has to be set up for a margin loan. You can't just have an investment account and it's not automatic. So, uh, but if you do have that feature on your account, you could borrow up to usually 50% um, of that. Uh, and there's a lot of risk with that. Okay, a lot of risk. Um, sixth is getting a loan on your 401k plan. So if you have a 401k, typically you can borrow up to 50%. Um, or excuse me, I didn't mean 50%, I meant 50,000. <laughs> Sorry about that. $50,000 from your 401k plan and you do have to pay that back to yourself and it's typically, uh, it typically will be deducted from your paycheck. Uh, so that was number six. Number seven is if you have life insurance policies and they're permanent life insurance policies, I'm not ter talking about the cheap term policies, I'm talking about policies that have cash value in them, you can uh, borrow the cash value um, from the life insurance and, and or you can actually withdraw it. But again, it's complicated. Uh, and there's different ramifications and, and, and tax consequences, etc. So that was number seven. And then number eight is sales of antiques and art. So um, I'll run through them very quickly one more time. Uh, one is cash flow, two, your savings account, three, home equity line of credit, four, selling positions in your investment account, five, a margin loan on your investment account. Six, loan on your 401k plan. Seven, loan on the cash value in a life insurance policy. And eight, sale of antiques and art. Those are the eight uh, strategies that I came up with uh, to fund your divorce. Everyone's situation is different and I suggest that before you try one of these methods, it's probably uh, better to contact a financial professional to find which way would be most beneficial for you and your situation.